Well, this week, it's time to head back to Alabama. It's time to make that transition from Rio to Eastern. We're heading to Chapel Hill Plantation, our buddy Reno's place. He's got a bunch of turkeys this year. He knows where they're hanging. Let's get after them. Turkey Hunter is brought to you by Browning, the best there is. All right, guys. We just got back from Texas, had an awesome trip. And Reno and I decided to stop by Chapel Hill Plantation. Alabama season opens this weekend. So uh, we're excited about that. The only problem is we can't use decoys first 10 days of Alabama, but uh, we, we got up early this morning. We're gonna head out and we can, we're gonna see if anything's gobbling and where they're gobbling, just to know what to do in the morning. But uh, it's a beautiful morning. It's 60 degrees, uh, very nice. They should hammer it. It's starting to light up a little bit out there. You ready? Well, Reno and I head to a high spot on the farm. It's a great place to listen. You can pretty much hear the entire property from this location. And sure enough, there's turkeys gobbling everywhere. Successful scouting mission this morning. There is turkeys everywhere. Reno has managed this property for several years and it's just now getting somewhat back to like it was when he first got it. He had a lot of turkeys when he first got it. And they kind of left and I mean he manages it for turkeys, for deer and everything and he does these prescribed burns. And I'll show you guys some of this new growth coming up in these burns. It makes it easy for turkeys, you know, to see food on the ground and they like the little shoots that shoot up, the green shoots. And uh, it's just great for turkeys all the way around. And it's proved, proven to be effective because he has got, I mean, there's turkeys in every direction right now. And last year, you couldn't even hardly hear one. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So it shows you what management can do. Well, Reno and I have the rest of the day on our hands. So we decide we're gonna catch some bass and we got some turkey left over from the Texas trip and we're gonna fry up some bass and turkey this afternoon. Oh, that's an eater. <laughs> There's another. Don't go on the grease. I tell you, there ain't nothing like some fried bass and some fried wild turkey. Nothing beats it. And we are super fired up for opening morning. Well, we made a decision. It's raining pretty good and it looks like it's fixed to get a little rougher, so. As you can hear, it's coming down pretty good out there and it looks like some thunder and some lightning's coming, so and some high winds, so we're just gonna let it roll out. It should be out of here by eight o'clock and we'll get after. What do you think, Reno? 
Yeah, it's kind of disappointing, but, you know, not a whole lot we can do about it. We know there's some birds here. We just got to wait this weather out, see if we can't get on them. Well, as it gets daylight, the rain just continues to pour down. And Reno just eases to the back of the cabin, looks out the back window, and sure enough, there's a gobbler out there on the edge of some tilled ground, and he's out there gobbling every time it thunders. It's still raining, but it's almost over with. We're gonna try to get a jump start on this bird. He's out there in some ground that's turned up, strutting, scratching around, gobbling. We're just gonna try to, I got trash bag over the camera. We're just gonna try to cut some distance to him. We gotta get around a pond. I don't want that pond to be an issue. And uh, hopefully set up and call this turkey and he's by himself and he's gobbling. I think he'll come. So, fingers crossed. Maybe we won't get to it. Well, we get around this bird. We cut the distance. We find us a good place to set up. We get hid and go to calling. Well, I call and he doesn't respond. And about 10 minutes goes by and I just happen to look to the left and I can see him strutting on the edge of the field. Strutting. He's to the left over here where I thought he'd come. Just hang on. On the edge of the field, strutting. To the left, right here. <laughs> See these three trees over here to our left? Three little trees. Right where I look down my camera. Seems trutting. He might do it, let's see. Well, this bird heard the calling, and he came to it. It's just a typical no decoy situation. So he starts circling the call and eases to our left and out of sight. To the left of that tree. He's walking left. Well, the bird circles all the way around behind us and hits a logging road and then crosses that logging road and slips into the pines to our right side. The bird turns and starts going back in behind us, back to the logging road. And as he does, I realize Reno can't shoot the bird. So he goes in behind some trees and when he does, I jump up, turn around, get the camera on him. Reno passes me off the gun when he goes in behind some more trees and I get on him. Baby. <laughs> Got him. 
about that, Reno. That's okay. Well, we got us a one spurred gobbler this morning. One of them's pretty sharp, but we got rained out this morning here at Chapel Hill. It was a lot of rain, a big system come through, but we knew as soon as it broke, it was gonna be game on. We were sitting there down in the dumps and Reno looked out the back window and there's a gobbler out there in the turn ground. He said, there's a gobbler out here, Russell, right now. So we started filming him. And I was like, as soon as this rain breaks, we killing him. We made a big slip all the way around the pond, found us a place to set up and brushed it in just a little bit and went to calling. He didn't gobble at the call, but about six, eight minutes went by and I looked up on the edge of the field and he was standing there strutting. He cut to our left instead of coming straight to us, you know, typical no decoy kind of hunt and cut to our left. I could hear him drumming the entire time to the point where he got in behind us on this road right here and he was drumming in it about 50 yards off. Then he got to our right and I told Reno, I said, if you look to your right, you can see him. He finally picked him up and I, I yelped to him a little softly instead of circling around us like I hoped he would do where Reno could kill him. He went to go back in behind us. And I'm like, we need to kill this turkey. We done called him in two times. We, we, we need to get him dead. And uh, anyway, he went behind a wad of trees and that gave me a perfect opportunity to stand up, turn around and turn the camera around. And uh, I leveled the camera up and I asked Reno, I said, can you kill him? He said, no. And I said, you care if I kill him? <laughs> he handed me the gun when, he went, when his head went behind another tree. And uh, I yelped to him and he kind of went half strut and I shot him, we ended up getting the bird. It was a pretty, not, not, it wasn't your best turkey hunt, but it was cool how it all transpired. We made a game. Yeah, that's, that's Alabama turkey hunt. That's exactly right. We made a game plan, made it happen, and luckily there's a bunch of turkeys on this place. And uh, we're going to get after another, ain't we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, got another, you got another shell? I got one more. That's okay. all I need. That's though. all you need. That's right. Hey, it's been a good day thus far. We got blue skies, and I know these turkeys is fixing to get right. Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that, it. That was fun. Real. That, that, was, that was turkey hunting. Turkey Hunter is also brought to you by Apex Competitions, Indian Creek Shooting Systems, Foot on the Head Game Calls, Grounded Brand Turkey Vests, Apex Ammunition, and Vortex Optics. Enter the Apex Outdoor Rewards Turkey Challenge in your state. Over $120,000 in cash rewards. Limited number of entries allowed statewide. Every bird is a possible winner. Reward your passion at apexoutdoorrewards.com. Well, after a successful hunt that morning, Reno and I stay after them. We go to the same side of the farm to another location. We don't have any luck. So we decided to go to the other side of the farm to a spot where Reno's been seeing some more birds to see if we can't strike one up. All right, guys, new location. Other side of the property. Reno's been seeing a lot of turkeys over here. We're going to a place called the church plot. And I'll try to find us a place to tuck in over here. I think we'll be in between two sets of turkeys. So this could be good for business with them. Uh, assess the situation, see what it looks like over here. Find us place to set up and do some calling this afternoon. So fingers crossed we'll get one. You barred up. Let's go. Let's, let's shoot one in the face. <laughs> we start easing into the woods and we don't get a hundred yards from the cart and some crows holler and a bird gobbles to our right. Reno and I set up in front of the shooting box, and I'm thinking the bird is to our right up on this rise across the hollow. I was thinking it was a great spot to set up. The turkey would come in, maybe hit this power line in front of us, and come up to us. But as we get set up, and I call to the bird, he gobbles to our immediate right.
This bird is coming in hot. The only problem is he's coming to our right, and when he pops out of this brush to our right, he's going to be right up on top of us. And sure enough, when he does, he spots us. I just keep soft calling after this bird putts, and it's just keeping him around. He doesn't know what we are, he just knows something's up, but he also knows there's a hen over there as well. I keep soft calling and scratching in the leaves, and this bird just hangs around. And he slowly eases his way down to the creek, and I look at Reno and I'm like, hey, if he comes out, he's gonna come out down at the creek, and sure enough, Reno spots him, he drops in the creek, and comes out the other side. Down in the creek. Down in the creek. <laughs> in the creek. <laughs> hey. That might have worked, either. <laughs> we had to work for that one. <laughs> we had to work for it. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That old turkey, old turkey. Thanks for quarter. <laughs> I'll get it. Hey, my hat fell in the creek. <laughs> my hat fell. The turkey fell in the creek. My hat fell in the creek. I'll get it, let's look at him real quick. Oh yeah, that's a good three year old turkey. That's that turkey we were seeing on camera. <laughs> that ain't your best video. Thank you. But hey, you can't use decoys. I know it. I know. That's what the... Uh, it just is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We got Russell one this morning. We, we came in, took a little break, went back out. Went to a place where we've been seeing some, and they, they just weren't there. We didn't hear anything, so we decided to make a move. We came over to the Sendero here and uh, made a big loop here. And we were sneaking in, and uh, we heard this old big boy gobble at a crow. And <laughs> so we kind of scurried around a little bit, got set up. Wasn't the best set up in the world, but That's my it's, fault. it's good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. So, But uh, Russell started calling, and he gobbled. And man, he had already moved about 100 yards. And so we were a little bit out of position again. So... Russell kept calling and, and he gobbled again and he was closer. He was coming. And uh, he must have gobbled 20, 30 times. On the way to us. Yeah. On the way to us. And uh, Russell saw him step out or get to the edge right there. And by the time I saw him, he had uh, looked out across the Sandero here and saw something he didn't like. And so he started putting a little bit, went back. He wasn't 100% sure, no. was he? I but, kept uh, calling though, and, he, and that, that eased his mind a little bit. Yeah. He kept gobbling, kept him around. Yeah. And he wasn't sure what he saw, and uh, 
he finally cut down here a little bit and tar started to come out again, saw us again, and put it again. So I just kept calling. <laughs> I just kept purring, soft calling, scratching in the leaves, and he was convinced. But he knew something wasn't right. And I told Reno, <laughs> I said, he's probably going to pop out down there by that creek. And sure enough, he eventually did. Yeah. And across the creek, Reno said, here he comes. He's about to pop out at the creek. Yeah. <laughs> and I got on him real quick, and he, he stuck his head up after he crossed the creek, and we got him. And it's yeah. not the best video, neither one of the hunts, but uh, that's that's – that's what happens when you can't use decoys. Yep. First 10 days of the season here in Alabama, you can't use decoys. So, But they were great turkey hunts, nonetheless. Oh, yeah, they were. They were, man. I'm, I'm proud of him. He's Heck a good yeah. bird. Oh, yeah. He's a three-year-old. Heck, yeah. <laughs> I bet he's 25 pounds, too. We're going to measure him up for the Apex Turkey Challenge. <laughs> we might have to drink a beer here shortly. Huh? We? Yeah, I'm ready. You want to fur it? I'm ready right now. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, man. Thank you, Russell. That was fun thank you, about. thank you, thank you. Thank you. That was great. Heck yeah. Great hunt. Wonderful hunt. He, he flopped over in the creek and got a little wet, but that's okay. You about lost your hat, too. <laughs> yeah. And I stuck my hand down in some fire ants. <laughs> that's just turkey hunting, though. That's turkey hunting. <laughs> man, what a bird. Thank you again, Russell. Yes, sir.